Good morning, everybody. Um, here we are starting yet another week. It's amazing how long this has been going on and um, certainly has uh, extended far beyond anything that any of us had anticipated. Even the experts seem to be um, were unprepared for how long this would linger. But um, hopefully we'll get through this sooner than later. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about this week is, is the issue of foundations. I mean, really the question is, what are our lives really built upon? And I'll explain in a moment why that's such an important question. But um, throughout history, especially in modern history, whenever there's been some kind of great life-altering event, um, it's defined by the great whatever. I mean, for example, uh, there was a great war, and then there was the Great Depression, and then the Great Recession. And somebody the other day made the comment that really connected with me. It said, right now we're going through the great disruption. And I can think of no better way because it's not like there is any kind of uh, fundamental problem in the culture in terms of the economy or a military threat or uh, that, that would really precipitate such a uh, upheaval in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, it's, but it's, it's a self-imposed disruption uh, purportedly for the sake of stop, stopping the spread of the pandemic. I think that only time will really tell us um, how accurate that estimation was and, and how effective the efforts were that were made to, to bring it to an end. But for us, it, it really does earn that great designation because it's um, an unparalleled event. I mean, never in the history of the world has have nations tried to completely shut down not only their nation, but the entire world. Um, the closest we have to it is in the countries, uh, communist countries like uh, the Soviet Union or in Cuba or as Venezuela is trying to do right now and some other places around the world. But the, the idea of just actually creating a, a stay-at-home enforcement policy where your life is being restricted, um, this has never happened. I mean, we've had unparalleled social disruption, uh, a, a kind of emotional isolation by the people. We've had economic disruptions that has affected us very unevenly because if your work was essential, you got to continue making income. And if it was not essential, um, then you were without a job. But then again, you could apply for unemployment in most cases. And Ironically, many people are making more money on unemployment than they were making on their job, and so they're not real anxious to go back. And it's really changed all those dynamics, though. There's there's also been this huge medical disruption because over, for a while only COVID patients were taken in, and so as a result, you have uh, hospitals that basically were on the verge of going bankrupt because they didn't have enough patients. But I think more specifically, there is what I call the emotional disruption. And this is a, a more of a hidden thing because, and it becomes amplified and more hidden because your lack of interaction with other people. I mean, there are some of you, I understand, who are literally alone most of the time. Uh, my 97-year-old father-in-law tells me that he actually has almost no contact with other persons uh, on a weekly basis. He may have one or two interactions and that's it. And it's really taking its toll on him. Uh, we begin to feel things like loneliness. Um, and that's something that God never created us for uh, in Genesis 2.18. He said, it's not good for man to be alone. And so that isolation, that loneliness is really, really uh, very disrupting to our emotional stability. And that's where we're finding a rise in depression uh, and even suicide and addiction and many other health problems, which may in time far exceed even the, the damage that was done through the epidemic or the pandemic itself. In fact, one doctor said that there are probably a half a million people, 500,000 people who are going to die from cancers that were not diagnosed because of the closure of hospitals and clinics. So it's really, really a crazy time. And when you add on to that, the international tensions that are out there right now, especially between the United States and China and China's intrusion into Hong Kong and its threats of invading Taiwan, these are deeply upsetting things. And then, of course, then we had on top of it all the, the racial disruption that's taking place in many cities around the country because of a uh, the murder of by police officers of a, 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 a African American man. So all these things are, are deeply troubling, and and the thing is that we didn't really 
have a part in, in, in creating these problems. These things were simply forced upon us, and they do tend to have a, a disruptive effect on how we feel. I mean, think about your own self. How have you responded to this whole set of disruptions? Have you become more fearful? I find many people are, are very terrified. In fact, even when we did have the discussion of saying, how do we go about reopening services? There's some people who have simply said, I'm not coming. I'm not taking the chance of becoming infected. And, and I get that. That's not irrational, especially if you have underlying diseases or if you're in that age category. Well, in fact, I'm in that age category. In fact, but if you're in that age category, it, it can be very, very dangerous for you to do so. Because whereas the... Uh, the uh, virus may not have much of an effect upon younger people. It tends to be incredibly devastating to older people and people especially with underlying, uh, underlying conditions. So I get the fear, uh, but there's also some people who are very angry. They're angry about how their livelihood has been taken from them, their business is being tubed, their, their uh, uh, relationships are being cut off. And that, of course, ultimately anger is the beginning or first phase of what ultimately ends in depression, where when you begin to feel like there's nowhere to go with your anger and there's no way of resolving it, you begin become depressed and depressed people will either strike out, which we find is creating a lot of family tensions, or they'll feel helpless and they'll go into an either deeper depression and really give up life. So um, and basically you're waiting for the, the government or somebody else to come and rescue from that situation. I say all this because I think intuitively we sense that the world has changed and it probably never will be the same. And even though I've said to you, I hate this word new normal, uh, my fear is that the new thing that's going to come is not going to be anything like what normal was. It's going to be a different world. And, and we understand that there are people right now who are machinating to make that a reality. They see this disruption, uh, this crisis as being an opportunity to push forward a new agenda. And that's all part of the dynamics that we feel in our day-to-day life. Because not only do we know that things are going to be changed probably forever, but we're uncertain what that change is actually going to look like. If there are people who are predicting to you, and there are some people that are doing that, you have to understand that they're guessing. Maybe an educated or informed guess, but they are really guessing. I mean, just I was listening to a uh, interview with the uh, the president of, or the CEO of PayPal, and he basically said that we've taken a five year leap in digital technology. He says that technology, uh, the idea of online banking and and pay paying with uh, digital currency and ordering online and all of those things has just escalated dramatically. We even see it at the church the number of people who pay through uh, online giving has gone up probably 300, 400, 500 percent. Now, we're thankful for that, but the simple fact is we realize that these are changes that have affected how we live our lives and how we see them. And so I think it's important for us to be asked some really, really critical questions at the point. How has this disrupted my life? And um, what can I do? How can I respond positively? And I want to leave you with one passage of scripture because I haven't really even quoted anything, but Psalm 11.3 kind of underlines the importance of foundation when it says the following. If the foundations are destroyed, what are the righteous to do? So this gives you something to start thinking about this week. Uh, I hope to develop this uh, theme as we go through the week. And so uh, wait for my next broadcast tomorrow morning and um, we'll continue the conversation. And as always, God bless you and I'm, I'm glad you're there. We're praying for you.